In this section, we are going to have a look at a particular exotic option called binary options. Now, binary options, there are mainly two types of binary options. The first one is called cash or nothing binary options. And also, you have something called asset or nothing binary options. Now, the first thing to understand is that the word binary as you can imagine, it's one of the one of two results. Either it's a yes or no. It's true or false. Basically, binary means it's one of the two. So it's either yes or no or true or false. So when we talk about binary options, especially cash or nothing binary options, now the way it works is if there is a payoff, it's always a fixed amount. So here we have a cash or nothing call option. And here we have a cash or nothing put option. But the first thing to remember is that when you talk about a cash or nothing binary option, the payoff is always a fixed amount or it's zero otherwise. So remember, now if we take a normal, uh, in other words, a plain vanilla call option, as you can remember, the payoff is the difference between the underlying and the strike and of course if you take a plain vanilla put option the payoff is the difference between the strike and the underlying but when we talk about cash or nothing binary options the payoff is literally a fixed amount or it's zero so that's the first thing to remember when we talk about cash or nothing so that's what we are saying here cash or nothing and this cash is a fixed amount so that's, that's one of the easiest ways to remember. It's cash or nothing. So it's either a fixed amount or zero. Irrespective where your underlying lands at maturity. So let's go through this example here. So this is a cash or nothing call option. Now remember, a call option is only valuable if your underlying is above the strike price at maturity. Remember, we are talking about European options. So at maturity, if your underlying is above the strike, then of course your call option has some value. Now, when we talk about a cash or nothing call option, basically what we are saying is, so this pays a fixed amount. If the asset price is above the strike price at maturity and zero otherwise. So, if you're at maturity, if you underline, let's say, assume that you took a long position on a cash or nothing call on a particular stock. So let's assume that the strike price of this option is $20 and the payoff is $125,000. So at maturity, remember we are talking about call options. So remember call option is only valuable or, or you will get a positive payoff at maturity if your underlying is above the strike. Remember, always remember this option when we talk about uh, this formula, when we talk about call options, it's only valuable if your underlying is greater or is above the strike. So at maturity, if you have passed $20, you can see if your underlying is, let's say $20 and one cents, you'll get this positive payoff of $125,000. Now at maturity, if you're even slightly lower, like in here, $19.90, you still have a zero payoff. And even if you are $20, your payoff is still zero. So that's quite a key concept when we're talking about a cash or nothing binary option. Now in the same way, a cash or nothing put, again, it, pro it gives you a payoff of a fixed amount if the asset price is below the strike price at maturity and zero otherwise. Remember, a put option gives you a positive payoff at maturity if your underlying is less than your strike price. So that's what we are saying here. If the asset price is below the strike price, of course you will have a payoff and that payoff is a fixed amount because it's cash or nothing. And the, we said this cash amount is a fixed amount. So it will give you a fixed amount and or else it's zero otherwise. So you can see here, let's assume that your strike is $20. 
Now at maturity, if you're slightly lower than the strike, so in this case, $19.90, you will get a positive payoff of $125,000. Here we are assuming the payoff is same as here. And if you are even slightly lower than your underlying $20.01 or even $20, your payoff is zero. So you can see one of the unique features of a cash or nothing binary option is that it's almost like a bet. You know, if now, for example, if you take a call option, it's like you're saying that you're betting, you're, you're putting $20 on a bet and you can think of, you know, if, if, uh, if you're putting a betting on a particular team, winning a particular match, and you say, if the team wins, I will get $125,000. And if the team loses, of course, I don't, I, I get nothing. But the amount of bet is $20. So it, it almost seems to be, seems to be similar to a, as if you are betting. Now, due to this nature, and, and, and one of the reasons is that you can see the payoff is not continuous in a cash or nothing binary option is the payoff is discontinuous. In other words, if you remember a payoff for a plain vanilla call option, you can see, remember that the payoff is simply the underlying minus the strike. Now in this case, if you just think about this case, if your strike is $20 and if this is a normal call option, a plain vanilla call option, when your underlying goes above $20, in this case $20.01, your payoff will be simply the difference between $20 and one cents minus $20, which means one cents. And then as your underlying keeps increasing, your payoff will slowly increase. But in a binary option, in a cash or nothing binary option, suddenly from zero, it jumps up to that fixed amount, in this case $125,000. Now, due to this reason, Sometimes in some of the countries, binary options, especially cash or nothing binary options are banned because some of the traders could manipulate the price of the underlying in their favor. So for example, let's assume a, a, a trader has taken a long position in this particular cash or nothing call option. And if the price, let's assume the current price is $19.90 and we have few days for the option to mature. Now the trader could enter into quite a lot of orders to purchase this asset. Remember, when you enter into long orders, in other words, to buy something, the demand for that asset increases, which means it will push the price up. So you could enter into some of the massive large contracts to purchase this particular asset, and that will slightly push the price up in order for you to get a positive payoff. Now the same way, if you have a put option, remember in a put option, the motivation is the price has to go below the strike. So let's assume you are in $20.01 and you want to push the price slightly below $20. So in this case, as a trader, someone might enter into loads of positions to sell the asset. So remember, if you're selling, if, if an asset is sold in large quantities in the market, that means there's not much demand and therefore that will push the price down, which means you might enter into this region where you might you will get a positive payoff of $125,000. So these are some of the reasons that binary options are banned because some of the traders could manipulate the price of the underlying in order to receive a favorable payoff. And binary options, in the past have been sometimes linked into some of the fraudulent activities or trades. Now, another type of binary option is called asset or nothing. Again, as like the name suggests, in an asset or nothing binary option, the payoff is equivalent to the price of the underlying, that's the asset price or nothing. So if you take a asset or nothing call option, the way it works is, so here we are saying this pays an amount equal to the asset price if it's above the strike price at maturity and zero otherwise. So just assume in this example here in this diagram, just assume that the strike price is $10. Now at maturity, if your asset price, you can see the x-axis is the asset price and the y-axis is the payoff. So at maturity, 
if your asset price is eleven dollars, which which means of course it has exceeded the strike, which is which we said ten dollars. If your asset price is eleven dollars, you will receive a payoff of eleven dollars. If your asset price is twenty dollars, again it's more than the strike, you will receive a payoff of twenty dollars. But if your asset price falls below the strike, then there's nothing. So that's what we are saying: asset or nothing. Again, it's different from a normal call option because remember, in a normal call option, if your asset price ends up at eleven dollars, the payoff will be eleven dollars minus ten dollars. Remember, in a normal call option, the payoff is underlying minus strike. So again, that's the reason you see a discontinuity. It's zero here, and then suddenly it's jumping to a positive payoff. Now here, of course, we are ignoring the premium. Now the same way, on an asset or nothing put option, again this pays an amount equal to the asset price if it's below the strike price at maturity and zero otherwise. So again here, if your asset price is anything above the strike price at maturity, you will your payoff will be zero. But if your asset price at maturity is below the strike, then you will get the payoff. That's equivalent to the asset price. So when we talk about binary options, it's important that, of course, you have to remember the payoff formulas for the, a plain vanilla call option and a plain vanilla put option, because that will tell you whether your binary call option or your binary put option has a positive cash flow or not. And then the other thing to remember is that if it's a cash or nothing binary option, it's always a fixed amount. So if if we have a cash or nothing, it's a, it's a fixed amount. And if it's a asset or nothing binary option, it's the value of the the payoff is the price of the asset. And another key thing to remember is that it, one of the major ways it's different from a normal call option or a put option is that in a call option you take the difference between the Underlying and the strike. So, yeah, in the same way, in the put option, you take the difference between the strike and the underlying. Now, in a binary option, we do not take the differences. It's either a fixed amount in a cash or nothing, or it's a amount of the the value of the asset in a asset or nothing binary option. Now, finally, you can use a combination of binary options to set up a plain vanilla option. So here. If you take a long position in a asset or nothing call, remember in an asset or nothing call option, your payoff at maturity will be zero if your underlying is less than the strike. So that's what we are saying. Max is either zero, or if your underlying is above the strike. So if your underlying is above the strike, your payoff will be equivalent to the Asset price, which is S, so the payoff at maturity will be maximum, either it's zero or S. And then, if you take a short position in a cash or nothing call, remember, cash or nothing call, you either get a fixed amount of cash or nothing. And since it's a short position, you can see the diagram is a reflection; it's a mirror reflection of the long position of a cash or nothing call. Now. One thing to remember when we set up these two positions, a long position in an asset or nothing call and a short position in a cash or nothing call, we'll end up with a long call option. But one key feature of this position here is that you need to set this up, this short cash or nothing call, in a way where the payoff, the fixed amount. Remember, in a cash or nothing call, you receive a fixed amount. The fixed amount should be equivalent to the strike price. So remember, in this example here, we said the fixed amount is one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Now here, when we are setting up this portfolio, the fixed amount should be the strike price. You have to set up an option in that manner, which we, which you can because remember, your when you are selling, when you are taking a short option, short position means you are selling a put option. Sorry, in this case, a call option. Since you're selling, you can define the criteria and you can define that the payoff will be the strike price. 
Now, once you set this up in this way, your net payoff will be a long call. So if you remember, in a cash or nothing call, now since it's a short position, we have put minus in the front. In a cash or nothing call, your payoff will be the maximum of zero. Because remember, if you're in a call option, if you end up at maturity less than the strike, you'll, be, you'll have a zero payoff, so it's zero. And at maturity, if you exceed the strike, you will get a fixed amount of cash flow. And since the fixed amount is K, which is the strike, so we have K here. So it's a maximum of zero or K, and we have put minus because you are taking a short position, which means you will have to pay. So if you add these two positions, you will get a long call option. And this minus can go in within the brackets. So that gives you S minus K. And if you remember this, this is the payoff of a long call option. Now in a similar way, you can set up a position. Basically, you can take a short position in an asset or nothing put, and you can take a long position in a cash or nothing put, and you will end up with a long put option. So this is an example of how you can take two binary options, which are exotic options, and create a plain vanilla call option or a put option. So remember, binary options are, have a quite an interesting payoff function. Basically, it gives you a fixed amount in a cash or nothing binary option and in a asset or nothing binary option, the payoff will be equivalent to the price of the asset at maturity or nothing. And of course, you can use a combination of binary options to create a, port, a profile which is similar to a long call or a long put. If you have any questions, just uh, put it in the comment section or drop us an email. We can have a look.